Hi everyone. Okay, well today we're going to talk about relays. Automotive 12 volt 30 amp relays. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so here we have one type of uh, relay and this is called, uh, for short terms, SPST, which stands for Single Pole Single Throw. These are pretty common, but there is also another type of relay you'll find. Here I have one. And this is called a single pole double throw. And you notice this one has five contacts on the bottom. And this one here, now they, both these relays are exactly the same. You can see that one has four. All right. The center contact usually is not used. And uh, if you happen to uh, get a wiring harness, you see this one, it has the uh, five terminal openings and in this case it's the white wire that is the center one all right what you'll do with this one <clears throat> if you happen to get it like that is just snip it off with a pair of wire cutters like that all right put a piece of uh, heat shrink tubing we'll do this real quick for you so you can see you know, slip that over your end of your wire Bend your wire over, insert it into the heat shrink tubing. Let me go down a little farther here. Push it in like that. Take your heat gun, and we're going to heat up that heat shrink tubing so it closes down. So the heat shrink tubing cools. There we go. And you'll see that that now will protect the wire from uh, contact with the weather. Uh, because what, what can happen, and which is uh, a killer to relays, is corrosion, of course. <clears throat> so one thing to help combat corrosion is this, dielectric grease. Now some of you have heard of it, don't bother using it, and some of you have no idea what it is. Well, what it is, is um, to promote good contact between your wiring and uh, your contacts <clears throat> excuse me I got something stuck in my throat um, and it prevents corrosion so it disperses water keeps the contacts clear of all that what happens if you don't use dielectric grease on your projects or your work and trust me if you change a light bulb a headlight uh, anything that has electrical contacts put dielectric grease on it. It's worth the four, maybe five dollars it might cost for a small tube like that. You don't have to cake it on like it's going out of style. You can take a little bit, put it on for smaller areas where you have to get into it. Use a Q-tip. Get right into those small areas. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you don't use dielectric grease. These are got out of a friend's car. And <clears throat> you can see that the corrosion here. Look at that. So it's green. Everything. That I, relay, garbage, finished, has to be replaced. And this is how it gets into the relay. You see those contacts? The corrosion, if it doesn't get in from here, all right, it'll travel up these wires. That's why we close the contact on the fifth wire there. Even though we're not using it, we're closing it off to protect it from grounding out and to keep the corrosion out. Another good thing to do is with your Q-tip on these type of connectors, put some uh, dielectric grease up inside each opening there. Put a lot of it in there and put some on each contact of your relay. Saves the problem. All right, that, uh, that was very important. I wanted to make sure I got that out. Now we're gonna talk about the, the different contacts and their numbers. Let me put my glasses on. <clears throat> So I can't even read my own handwriting unless I got my glasses on. All right, so <clears throat> we're gonna have these. I really apologize for the coughing here. You got your two relays. Now you have your uh, SPDT, which is your single pole double throw. Your SPST, single pole single throw. All right, and here's a diagram. <clears throat> I have everything all listed out. All right, and you can see the diagram shows the relay in this position. 
show that for you. So that side by side. Let's see they match. All right. So just take a pause and take a screenshot of that or pause it and write it down. Make a diagram for yourself so you have something to refer to when you're going to be using your relay. I'm just going to quickly go over it. Uh, number 85, that's the wire that comes from inside your cab from your switch. The switch you're going to use to operate whatever it is you want to use, whether it's fog lights, driving lamps, and so on. <clears throat> number 86 is to your ground. Now number 85 and 86 can be reversed. It doesn't, it's not really a big deal because all they're doing is operating a small uh, solenoid coil inside, like it creates a magnet, which operates the, uh, the, uh, the uh, switch, <clears throat> pulls it back and forth. So it's not really important which one has which power, but just for, for instruction sakes, 85 positive. Number 86 goes to your ground, okay? Number 87, is your power out to your project. So that would be uh, out to your fog lights, driving lamps, uh, auxiliary lights, what have you. And in the case, <clears throat> I didn't mark it here, but so when you mark it down, put 87A, all right? Because that's for the center terminal on the one that has two outlets, all right? Now this one is when the relay is at rest. So when your switch is inside, inside your vehicle is turned off, the power is now routed from the battery to number 87A, the center contact. Now there are occasions where it's useful, <clears throat> but in most cases you don't use it. So we're gonna cover that one up and make sure it's uh, secure. And then 30, now that's gonna go to your battery. Now I did a previous video where I did the splicing for this. Okay, and I just wanna go over it with this for with you guys that are just watching this video for the relay. Um, that's your, your power directly from your battery. So, very important. Uh, fuse everything. I mean, it, this is gonna connect, this end here is gonna connect to the battery. You notice I have a fusible link right here, all right? And inside, I'm gonna be putting a 20 amp fuse. Now, <clears throat> you want this the closest to the battery, and then you can, all this extra wire here, if any of it should ever make contact with the ground, your, your fuse here will blow and it'll protect you from getting a fire or just drawing your battery. All right, because batteries, would, if, especially on, on wires that are heavier gauge, um, if they don't start a fire or melt the wire itself, uh, the, the power draw from your battery could actually explode your battery. So you want to be careful of that. And if you notice, I've put uh, heat shrink tubing around everything, good splice. You can go check my splicing video out if you want to check that out. Very good idea. So, like I said, battery uh, the fuse close to the battery, very important. Now the other side of the power going out to your project, uh, which is number 87, all right, uh, you don't have to fuse that because if something happens with that while it's connected through the relay, all right, it'll blow the fuse at the battery. So you're safe there and you're covered by that 20 amp fuse. Anyways, I hope this has made it a lot easier uh, and that you've been able, I mean, relays are not complicated. It's just that if you're anything like me, there's no way you can read the numbers on the bottom of these damn relays. They're so friggin' small, they're black on black, and it's really tough. So, as always, thanks for watching.